na 17 moja kwa moja tumsikize rais uhuru kenyata kuhusiana na ujumbe alionao kabla ya uchaguzi hapo kesho I believe is today stronger than it ever has been. The last couple of months have truly been a test for each and every one of us. These days have tested our collective resolve to remain, to remain united as brothers and sisters, as citizens of one nation under God. And without doubt, they have tested our resolve to remain guided by our constitution, the supreme law of our republic. Let me begin by saying, firstly, we held a general election on the 8th of August of this year. By all accounts, these elections were free, they were fair, and indeed transparent, which is why they commanded the confidence of the African Union and many in the wider international community. But experience has taught us that elections, by their very nature, polarize people. So in the weeks that followed, it was necessary for all of us to come together to heal as a nation. And just as our healing was coming to its completion, the Supreme Court surprised each and every one of us by declaring the presidential election invalid. And to do this, they did not cite the number of votes, but they cited irregularities in the forms. As many of you now know, the court ordered that a fresh presidential election be held within six Na e, tunachangamoto kidogo hapo ya sauti ni jambo ambalo tunajaribu kulirekebisha huku rais Uhuru Kenyatta akitoa hutuba yake kwa taifa. na mtazamaji hapo tuna changamoto ya kuweza kupata sauti kutoka kwa ikulu ya Nairobi ambapo rais Uhuru Kenyatta anatoa hotuba yake na mnarifiwa kuwa sauti imerekebishwa hebu tusikize I knew was going to be a difficult period Ultimately I must say that I came to see this ruling as unsettling and distressing as it was, was indeed an opportunity, an opportunity for all of us, an opportunity for us as a country and as a people to prove to the world 
that indeed we are a mature democracy. As we all know, democracies are born in hardship. The right to self-governance must be fought for. And once won, a people must keep to their word. Fellow Kenyans, few responsibilities are heavier, and for that matter, more rewarding. The mere fact that our Kenyan judiciary can invalidate an election shows that we are stronger as a democracy that many would ever have realized. The judiciary is in fact independent and it made its own decision that this act of mature, grounded, modern democracy, many nations with many, many more years of experience as democratic states have yet to match. And I believe for this, fellow Kenyans, we have every reason to be proud of our nation to be proud of our progress, to be proud of our maturity. I believe that this was Kenya's greatest democratic test. But the dis decision of the judiciary suffices to show the world that Kenya is, is sincere in its commitment to being a modern democratic state. Now, fellow Kenyans, the judges made it clear that fresh presidential elections must happen within 60 days and must be supervised by the independent electoral and boundaries commission. And even with everything that has happened since that court ruling, we leaders from all political persuasion have no choice but to abide by that ruling and to abide by the constitution that we as Kenyans passed in 2010. Fellow Kenyans, tomorrow we head to the polls. Tomorrow we ask God for his guidance. We ask God to look over us and to grant each and every one of us wisdom and peace in these testing times. Tomorrow, we have yet another opportunity to show the world that we are a free, modern state preoccupied with striving for unity, peace, shared progress, and shared prosperity. Not only do we have a chance to reaffirm our constitutional and democratic, democratic right 
to choose the president of our republic for the next five years. But we also have a unique opportunity to solidify the foundations of Kenya as a modern 21st century democratic state. I believe and commit to the fact that if we hold together as a country through these challenges, I believe that we have the capacity to respect the independence of our constitutional institutions. And I further believe that all of us, including those that we have charged with the responsibilities and governance, will also put aside partisan ambitions to participate in the democratic process once again. I believe that if we do so, we will emerge from this episode a stronger, more confident, and more united as a people. Our forefathers fought and died for the right of the African to vote. We dare not reject the inheritance our elders so painfully won. Instead, it is my firm belief that it is our duty to protect and exercise this right, but also remain mindful of its price. I say, that after you vote, and I have said this before, please go home. Go back to your neighbor. Remember that in spite of their origin, your neighbor is your brother. Your neighbor is your sister. How you have voted, or for that matter, not voted, should not change the manner in which you relate to everyone else in our Kenyan family. Let us all maintain peace as we exercise our constitutional right to choose. The Electoral Agency, which is the IEBC, earlier today confirmed that all arrangements are in place. And I once again reiterate my administration's commitment to protecting the rights, the security, and the safety of every Kenyan. Your right to vote is enshrined in our Constitution. To those who wish not to vote, your rights are also equally protected by the very same Constitution. But let no one infringe on his brother's or sister's right and let everyone know that our security agencies have been deployed across the country to ensure the safety of each and every Kenyan. Let me say that even as we go to vote, this election has been made possible by the selfless service of our public servants, especially 
those in the security agencies, and our election officials. They do a very difficult job. I take this opportunity to commend each and every one of them. And I ask every Kenyan to let them serve without hindrance, as is indeed their duty and right. They have my support and will continue to do so, to have my support during and even after the elections. We are a nation guided by the Constitution and the rule of law. And anybody who wishes to express an opinion contrary to what has been planned for tomorrow must do so within the confines of the law. Those are the lines that have been drawn by our law. To step aside them is to step into anarchy. And as president of this great republic, sworn to defend constitutional order, I will not let that happen. As I said in my Mashjah Day speech, the law will apply equally to all, regardless of social class, political class and status, each and every one of us are all under the same law. My fellow Kenyans, in closing, I can promise each and every Kenyan one thing. Lie I is getting back to work. Get so that as a people we can info we can focus on improving on improving the lives of each, of each and every Kenyan. As we stand today, many of our brothers and sisters, our sons and daughters, are still struggling. Worried about putting they are worried food. about putting food on their tables. Yep. They are worried. They are worried about putting food on the plates of their children. They are worried about finding a job. They are worried about paying, they are worried about paying fees for their children's education. They are worried about they are worried about taking care of their, care fathers, of their and mothers. fathers and clearly work. We must tackle these tasks that are ahead of us. We cannot remain in a perpetual state of politicking. I know that business, as well as the private sector, have not had an easy time in recent times. Opportunities worth billions of shillings and thousands of jobs have been lost. Many wonder when, if ever, all this politicking will end. We ought to remember that our basics are as strong as they were before the election. Our shilling still remains stable. Kenyans are just as hardworking 
despite the fact that they are uncertain. They are just as well educated and they are just as innovative as they were before this election cycle. And I tell all our international partners that we will get through this together as Kenyans. I will assure you that my government will defend your property, your right to do business, your right to travel anywhere in our great republic. You can go about your work in the knowledge that our nation is working for each and every one of us. And when all of this is over, we will work together to make up for lost time. Equally, we must and we will ensure that the benefits of our nation's progress are felt by every Kenyan and that our nation's journey to becoming a modern 21st century country gives every Kenyan the opportunity of pride and prosperity. Every time, every single time that our nation has been presented with a challenge, we as a people have risen above the little things that divide us to boldly and with unity shape our destiny. This is how we have been rewarded with our home, Kenya. This is how we emerged stronger after the dark events of 2007 and 8. And this is how we have held together as a beacon of hope in an often troubled region. Tomorrow, fellow Kenyans, tomorrow, I urge you, as your president, to act with the same vigor and commitment that can be found in the heart of each and every one of us. If we do, we shall be rewarded with a stronger democracy and an exalted place in the world. And we will be emboldened by the recognition that we as Kenyans deserve. That Kenya is among the continent's leaders in democratic participation, peace, and prosperity. Finally, fellow Kenyans, I call on each and every one of us to turn out once again and vote. And I beseech Almighty God to protect this great nation and to give us his peace and tranquility. I thank you. May God bless you. And may God bless our great republic. Nifunge kwa kusema, amani, na amani kwa wote, na tukumbuke. Ataye piga kura, ataye kaye nyumbani. Sisi zote ni ndugu na dada. Na Kenya itakuwepo baada ya uchaguzi wa kesho. Asante ni sana. Thank you very much.
Namni Rais Uhuru Kenyatta hapo akiwa anatoa hotuba yake 